Welcome to Listening, Talking, Thinking, Audio, Driving, While Listening, Thinking, Driving, with an Accidental Futurist. I'm Charles Kirby, and this is a new podcast, movie, content, episodic thing where we talk while I'm driving. And by the way, driving safely, 10 and 2. And thank you so much for joining us. This first episode is going to focus in on acting, vocal techniques, and my training as a spotlight operator on Broadway and West End and off, off, off West End, or as I like to call it, Prague. Las Vegas, independent movie making. And I'd like to start by playing an excerpt from chapter 42 of Dave Eggers' amazing book, read by a fantastic vocalist. I don't remember his name. Anyway, the book is The Every. At this point in the book, Delaney has been taken into Gregory's reading room in the basement of Facebook. I mean, Meta. I mean, the circle. Or whatever May is calling it at this point. Listen in. It was quite delicious, Gregory said. Wall to wall crimes of all varieties. And yet it was not read. The documentary was watched, of course. He drifted off for dramatic effect. But back to Bailey. He gave me free reign and gave me this room and a budget to hire a team of readers. My rules were that this room remain free of all incoming or outgoing signals, that I run it exactly as I wish, and that I never have to speak to Tom Stanton. In turn, <laughs> Bailey's request was that this department turn any document around within a reasonable amount of time, usually within 48 hours, and that we eliminate all outgoing errors. Are you a grammarian? What is a grammarian? Delaney said. What is a gerund? He asked. A verb in noun form. The ing form. She said. Close enough. He said. Okay. So my first question is, in this like, podcasty, content, audiobooky, visual, why are you watching me drive while I'm talking with my hands, and are you watching this podcast with video, and why does Joe Rogan go on camera at all, and why does Jerry Seinfeld go off camera at all, and what do cameras have to do with anything? I'm going to pull over now because it'll be safer, and I get it. You're worried. My question is, why does the narrator of the book say Delaney said or Gregory said? Why does Dave Eggers write if I were to be, you know, reading you know, pages like, like this. Like if I were to be reading my accidental futurist speech, I had a rude awakening about a year ago. I got in a car with a guy I went to high school with in Princeton, New Jersey, named Ruben Steiger. Now, right there, I love the duality of the sentence. This is written by a, a screenwriter named uh, Jason Bale. And I love how he plays with where I'm from, Princeton, New Jersey, and where we kicked off our trip, Princeton, New Jersey. So I got in a car with a guy I went to high school with in Princeton, New Jersey, named Ruben Steiger, and drove across the country to San Francisco and the Redwood Forest. Fantastic, right? Like, Princeton, did I get in the car in Princeton, New Jersey, or did I go to high school with Reuben in Princeton, New Jersey, or is the best answer almost always both, except when it comes to cocaine 
and heroin. Now, I've never done either one, but here we go. So why does, okay, so uh, stick with me. You may or may not have noticed an overall degradation of the language and a proliferation of errors of spelling and grammar and even the most official documents. He didn't wait for an answer, just let her back inside, opening the door with a hush of heavy glass. Of course you have, I don't want to believe otherwise. Now, I thought the best way to give you a sense of the range would be for me to simply tell you what everyone is reading today. Fair enough? He led her to a wing-back chair of yellow wool in which a large man sat. He was wearing a page boy hat. Marcus is reading a 256-page contract between the Every and a supplier of cobalt. This has been read by a number of company attorneys and outside consultants, but the attorneys miss a lot. Given the proliferation of autofill and AI in the legal profession, lawyers no longer know how to write. Some 90% of contract boilerplate is now generated by algos and AI, with only minor human intervention or augmentation. This can lead to ghastly problems. Margaret. So, this made me think of a moment in real reality. Uh, October 2023 when uh, you're probably not listening or watching or consuming this in October of 2023. So I think it's... Oh, sorry, calendar on Apple Watch only goes out seven days. Thanks, Siri, for nothing. Sorry. Yesterday, I had a meeting with the AI team at NVIDIA. I don't know what they're trying to sell exactly besides the Snapdragon chip things, but they were criticizing kindly and constructively a couple different companies, uh, one of which I love called Speak AI, a uh, guy named Tyler and another guy named uh, Karan up in Toronto. And or Toronto, as they say. And they were kind of, well, the phrase that was used by somebody was, they move kind of slow there at Speak AI. And all of a sudden I was just like, maybe that's a good thing. All right. A thought for another pod movie cast thing. This is about content creation because that's where we have to start this. YouTube's calling them a podcast. I'm publishing on YouTube. I can't figure out Apple Podcasts. So this is not available wherever you get your podcasts. This is available on accidentalfuturist.com. That's it. Dot com. Nodded and they moved on to a 40 something woman in a puffy black coat. A wool blanket over her legs. Brenda, who is always cold, is reading a pre-publication galley of a book to be released in three months by a popular technology columnist. It contains a chapter about the every and all its terrifying power. He said the last two words without any affect. It will be Brenda's task to see if this book presents any real threat, though, of course, no book of its kind ever has, given these books are rarely read, you met Alessandro, I assume. I have, Delaney said. Thank you, Brenda, Gregory said, and they crossed the room and found a wary-eyed woman who had been hidden behind a bookshelf. She had shaved half her head and was wearing a City Lights t-shirt. So right there, do you see visions? As the actor is reading... Dave's words, as a Gen Xer, I close my eyes, I feel the sun in my kind of haptic experience, and I see the woman with the half-shaved head. Now, I haven't seen The Circle yet, the movie, but I recently, uh, I didn't know about Dave Eggers until like May. Uh, like earlier this summer. And I always try to find some fiction thing to escape and uh, in the summer. And I only listen to audiobooks 
I read magazines and listen to audiobooks. I don't know why. I don't know what the difference is, but content is king. So that's the name of our first episode of Driving with an Accidental Futurist. It has to be plural. It has to be driving with accidental futurists because obviously we'll call people, we'll have guests, uh, but they, I, I don't know, should I insist that they are also in the car or do I just have to be in the car? Because I have a excellent, excellent friend, uh, Shecky, uh, Pi92, and uh, Shecky is, uh, you know, funny, obviously, and uh, voiceover uh, actor, uh, you know, whatever, kind of well-known, famous kind of guy, and uh, micro-famous. We'll get to that episode three, probably. Um, you can just scroll ahead if you want. Um, all of these topics will be repeated uh, because... While I'm driving, I'm listening and talking and thinking and pretending that you're actually watching or listening or talking or whatever. Anyway, the movie in my head of the every is very clear about Gregory's reading room, chapter 42, Gregory's girl, Delaney, Wes, the whole thing, right? So, okay, stick with me. Minka is reading the work of Italo Calvino. May Holland is meeting the Italian Prime Minister in Sun Valley, and her team asked for a lesser-known Calvino quotation, something that... I love that May is not, like, a character, but she is, right? I mean, at the end of the circle, in the last two minutes of the audiobook of the circle, I had no idea it was over. Like, I... He, he says, he writes, you know, book one, and then it goes for 20 hours, and then book two, and it goes for, like, seven hours. And then, it's, and then he says, book three, May takes over as the head of the circle. And, that, and that's it. So, of course, in my head, a whole bunch of stuff happens. And then at the beginning of the every, I don't think I'm spoiling anything. It's a 2013 book. So spoiler alert. At the end of the, uh, at the beginning of the every, basically for me, which was like about two weeks, <laughs> the, the um, like intake medical exam for Delaney is... You know, she's she's given this Easter egg thing where she sees the May's sonogram. And so, you know, in between, I'm assuming, you know, I see the circle, duh, uh, you know, where May got married, had sex, you know, went out with the guy. Oh, oh, maybe it's Bailey's kid. Of course, there's the mysterious guy that fucks her in the bathroom. Maybe she got pregnant then. Maybe the sonogram isn't an Easter egg. Maybe it's just May's going to be a character. We don't know. Anyway would indicate she'd done more than a cursory internet search of his name and his famous quotations. Minka has read six of Calvino's books in the last three days and has so far compiled a list of 22 options. When she's done, Minka will winnow the list down to seven. May's team asked for seven. They thanked Minka, and Gregory led Delaney to a wall of glass, behind which sat two preternaturally calm people in their 50s. You'll see two people in our soundproof pod. That is Larissa and Theodore. Larissa has been with us for many years, and she's brought Theodore, a noted expert on Russian literature, on as a consultant. They're examining four versions of Dostoevsky's The Idiot. One is the original Russian publication. The second is the latest human-generated translation into English. The third was translated by AI, and its characters and plot improved through fit fix This morning, they were 67 pages in and had indicated that thus far, our AI fit fix version had improved upon the human generated translation. I think I missed the many. part. Inca has read six. Thank you, Brenda, Gregory said. And they crossed the room and found a wary eyed woman who had been hidden behind a bookshelf. She had shaved half her head and was wearing a City Lights t-shirt. Minka is reading the work of Italo Calvino. May Holland is meeting the Italian prime minister in Sun Valley. And her team asked for a lesser known Calvino quotation, something that would indicate she'd done more than a cursory internet search of his name. And he, I have. It's always cold, Lenny said. 
Thank you, Brenda. Sorry to jump Brenda around. Said, but there's a thing and I'm across trying the room to find. and found a wary-eyed woman who had been hidden behind a bookshelf. She had shaved half her head and was wearing a City Lights t-shirt. Words without any act. minor human intervention or augmentation. This can lead to ghastly problems. Marcus nodded and they moved on to a 40-something woman in a puffy black coat, a wool blanket over her legs. Brenda, who is always cold, is reading a pre-publication galley of a book to be released in three months by a popular technology columnist. It contains a chapter about the every and all its terrifying power. He said the last two words without any affect. It will be Brenda's that, task. Right there. I understand that when you're writing on like a computer, you have to say, he said the last two words without any effect. But if I say the words without any affect, without any affect, then why do I have to say he says the words without any effect or affect or affect or without any effect, without any affect, without any effect. I was not effective. I said the last two words without any affect, but then I put affect into the words. So if I'm writing a book, if I think like Dave Eggers, then I'm writing a book about a girl who wants to blow up Facebook. I have a theory that I'd like to share. I'm going to call it at least like what Cindy cubes are and, and what like these cubes of space and these digital twins are kind of dancing in together. It, I'm going to call it the many verses riffing on, you know, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. And I'm going to recognize that this is the most comfortable chair in my life because I can control the climate and I can put the heat on my back, which loosens up the, you know, vagus nerve. And then I can be listening to the every and I can be driving and the puppy's not eating any carpet. So, uh, meta, right? The metaverse is coined by, you know, a writer uh, of science fiction at the time, and now it's nonfiction. <laughs> now it's a biopic about you. <laughs> and, um, We've reached our destination and, and Rooney knows it somehow, which is just fascinating. So, um, I'm going to go with the many verses and they are floating within the universe in the same way that Neil Grass to, Ty to, to, to Tyson and, uh, and Joseph Campbell and, uh, George Orwell, you know, I wish I could come up with like a, uh, Francis Fry, uh, you know, brought to our attention and, uh, and the way that Kara Swisher, uh, gets it, you know, gets my mind rolling. Uh, Catherine McCauley, you know what I mean? Like, you know, identity women, people that are freaking smart and out there. Uh, Catherine McCauley is, uh, my life partner and, uh, Kalia Young is identity woman. Just by the way, look for, uh, either a feature of this podcast or it may be on another channel just because uh identity woman's kind of micro famous i don't know what her q rating is but she is uh out there and uh you know out there like in silicon valley and thinks that silicon valley is the center of the universe and that the metaverse is something that uh, maybe was stolen on one hacker way uh, uh, uh which i found on google maps <laughs> <laughs> i didn't die at burning man 2022 not the muddy one but the dusty one or one of the dusty ones <laughs> My name is Charles Kirby. 
and I'm an accidental futurist. If you are too, feel free to call me, 917-453-4762. Be sure to put a uh, one plus one in front of uh, the number 917-453-4762 because we don't edit this and George has got something to say to the woman walking by. Uh, all that said, check out a different podcast where I'm a guest uh, called Identity Woman and an Accidental Futurist. Boobs versus balls. That's the only difference. And then I'm supposed to be like, that's the only difference between men and women. You know, sort of boobs and balls. Because obviously ovaries are the reproductive equivalent of balls and men have boobs. But more importantly, or or interestingly to me, uh, boobs and balls are both external. And in the every, Dave makes this fantastic point about uh, like cleavage of the testicles and male leggings and Delaney has to keep her eye above the belt line. It's just great. Anyway, Georgia is pointing out Georgia is pointing out that we're at Nana's house and we're gonna go. But I guess what I'd like to just end with is thank you for joining me, me an accidental futurist and ah, Nana's here. Hi, Mom. We're coming over. Everybody say hi to Mom. Hi. Wait, Mom, come closer. You gotta, you gotta look in the camera. Hi. Hi, there's Mom. Hi. This will be, this will be funny after you're gone. When we'll, when if we miss you, you know what I mean. Like you know, if you die, it'll be funnier because then we'll see you on a podcast live. What is a podcast? How did she know what the topic of this podcast was? What is a podcast? And what is a movie? And what is Web 3.0 going to be? I don't know. I'll leave you with mom and the rune. Oh, no, that's Georgia and the rune. Say goodbye, Rooney. Goodbye, Rooney.